Hello, everybody. Welcome to Flickr Effect, episode 298, part two. Uh, really quick before this episode gets started. So yeah, when we went to record uh, this episode, it went on a little long, about two hours. So I decided when I was editing to split it up into two parts. In this part, part two, we share our thoughts on Spider-Man Far From Home. We uh, start off with a spoiler-free review. We get into spoilers later, but don't worry, we'll give you plenty of uh, warning about that. Uh, If you're looking for part one in that episode, we talk about Stranger Things season three. We talk about Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and a lot more. So make sure to check that out as well. But in the meantime, this is episode 298, part two. Uh, we had a big movie this weekend. Big movie. And let's get right to it. Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, our latest MCU movie since Avengers Endgame. Two um, whole months. Two whole months. Two whole months. God, I can't believe we had to wait two months. Two whole months. Um, it does feel like a while. And just think about when we go through next year and there's, what, only, I think, one schedule? Yeah, specifically. What? Sometime in the spring, isn't it? In 2020? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we've got Spider Man Far From Home, same director as Spider Man Homecoming. John Watts is back directing this one. And uh, now this is post, uh, as they're calling it in this movie, what the, the blip? The blip. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and I guess we'll get right to it. At least we'll start with our, with our spoiler-free thoughts. And, of course, off the air, we kind of decided an order on this, or at least the Bowl of Destiny did. The Bowl of Destiny. And uh, I begged the Bowl. You I, I the Bowl prayed, of Justice, I, I think. I prayed in front of the now. Bowl, and I said, <laughs> Bowl, please, I really, for some reason on this movie, want to be last. And it said, F you, David. <laughs> you're you're going to go first. Just because you asked me that silly damn question yeah that request you're so funny <laughs> you're so silly let's just call it what it is it's like i begged it to make me first i don't know oh, what i was saying you basically like. did you basically murphy law the, the right. bowl of destiny he went i'm sorry <laughs> no that's not how karma works here david <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so spider-man far from home i saw it what was that wednesday, wednesday night right wednesday night so I've had it for a few days in my head. Yeah. Um, to recap a little bit, uh, for those who don't remember, I I loved Spider Man Homecoming. You did. That was easily my f- at the time my favorite Spider Man film that I had ever seen. And also a little more backstory where I come into Spider Man from is that I I never read Spider Man as a kid. It wasn't like a you know a comic book character that I had a lot of knowledge of outside of the movies at all and when it came to the like the Sam Raimi films I thought they were good I I I didn't love them and actually I really started to like the the stuff with uh what the amazing Mm Spider-Man I like that first film the second film was well it was what it was Mm -hmm. (laughs) but uh actually I think I enjoyed that film more than most people didn't love it don't get me wrong but I really enjoyed Spider-Man Homecoming and uh, Tom Holland as Spider-Man. I immediately was like, okay, I think this is the Spider-Man that, that we've... maybe the comics, the comics were like giving everybody that I didn't get since I never read the comics or something. I don't know. I just really enjoyed that movie a lot. Um, so yeah, I was, I was looking forward to Spider-Man Far From Home, but I think I said on here too, like from a lot of the marketing, I don't know. I was, I was skeptical. <laughs> well, the marketing was a this Crap show. not only was like just like the print marketing pretty bad some of the posters but even the trailer trailers i was kind of like i don't know i don't know what to think about this and then yeah finally saw it wednesday night and i am not a fan of this movie <laughs> like and wow this is this is one of those movies where i feel like i'm just like in this review right now i don't know what you guys think of it but I have feel like there's a good chance I'm just going to sit back and let you guys if, enjoy it if you enjoyed it. Because it, it seems like I'm one of the very few people who did not really like this film. Like, it is seems to be getting a lot of love. I think it's currently, like, rocking, like, a 91% on Rotten Tomatoes. And I have seen friends on my social media that one, one, per, one friend. This uh, was, I think I know. This sure was sacrilegious. Saw. Claimed it was better than any Batman movie she'd ever seen. And I almost lost my mind. <laughs> Whoa. And, uh. <laughs> I don't know. This movie did not work for me. 
And I mean, I know I was skeptical from the marketing, but I definitely went into it with a pretty open mind. In fact, I really like how the movie opens. I, as the movie started and kind of set the stage for, okay, this is this post again, end game kind of world. I was like, all right, this is, this is great to, you know, but it went, it went downhill from there. And, wow. uh, there's no, there's no doubt there's a point in the film, and this is a movie that is definitely hard to talk about without talking about spoilers, and, yeah. we'll, and we'll talk about spoilers for sure. But, uh, you know, it, it gets better, and there's a couple scenes in particular I enjoyed quite a bit, and I still love Tom Holland as Spider-Man. I think he's a fantastic Spider-Man. Mm. I loved even more in this movie from the first movie, Zendaya and her character. She she's impressing me more and more as an actress. I think she's great. Um, but yeah, overall, like this, this movie, I, I don't get it. <laughs> like I, I'm sitting back watching the love that this movie's getting and I'm sorry, I just do not, I think you guys have all been fooled. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand what everyone enjoys yeah. about this movie. And I think there's things that happen early in the movie that are just happening kind of too quickly. And, and for instance, and I don't know if this, I don't think this is really a spoiler to say this, but like, for instance, there's stuff I'll just say like in the trailer that shockingly is not in this movie, not this happens all the time now. Mm-hmm. And it's stuff that I will like, actually, I think that was the kind of stuff I wanted in this movie. Like, why right. was that? Why was that, fucking, I know exactly why was that cut from this? Oh, well, I want, we want to get them to Europe as quickly as possible. And it felt too fast. It felt like, boom, we're there. And I don't know. It just. There was stuff about that aspect of them getting on their trip and it just, I don't know, it didn't quite work. And, and even the trip itself is like, it's kind of silly. There's aspects of this movie that are kind of just silly that it's, I don't know, it doesn't work. This movie did not work for me. I, it's a bummer coming off of Endgame. And I know this is, I guess, technically the last film of phase three, but you can, it's obviously setting the stage for phase four. And I know this is also, you know, this is one of the Spider-Man films. So it's a partnership between Sony and Marvel Studios. Right. It's not just a straight up Marvel Studios this movie. Isn't right. But still, if this is really kind of setting the stage for things to come in phase four, I'm I'm not interested. <laughs> like I I even the the end credit stuff, and we'll get to that too, I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, right. That's that's where I am with this. I was really bummed by this movie. I'm not saying I hate it. It's kind of it's fine, wow. but especially coming off home, Homecoming, which I I loved. I, right. You know, I this this bummed me out. This was definitely worse than I expected. <laughs> so that that's where I am with Spider Man from Home. Okay. Uh, Falling out hate. Got it. <laughs> the bowl picked you second, Michelle. What did you think of Spider-Man Far From Home? Well, I mean, I don't want to give away too much here, but I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. This this film, so Dave and I kind of talked about this film, which we almost yeah, never we really do. Yeah, we normally don't talk about stuff because we try to keep it for we the show. We try to keep it for the show, but I'm not going to lie. Like, I had a I was, hard time, I think, holding back you, my... Right, it was right after the movie, and I had a hard time really just holding it in. I was like, I know we're not talking about this for a few days. <laughs> it was, I mean, because you have to realize we saw this Wednesday night. It is Sunday, and it's Fourth of July weekend, so it's not like what, there were jobs that were like you know everybody's hanging out. It's Fourth of July weekend, everybody's just kicking back, right? So no, it quickly it was obvious that like both of us wanted to discuss this film. So I already knew how David felt. So that's it was so funny <laughs> watching the Bowl of Destiny today. And I see his name come out first. I was about to die. Because, <laughs> again, like you're saying, this uh, people are loving this. I've seen, I saw the, that your friend on Facebook post that. I have people put, this is one of the better films in the entire MCU. There was one person that was like, thank God they're bringing this back up, the game back up. And I'm like, did the game drop? What? I'm, I've been lost in some of the comments I have seen. I'm like, wait, I'm sorry. What just happened? Didn't we just see... Some pretty awesome things happening here with in Avengers and Infin I no? Okay, well anyways. Um so here's where I'm at with it. And I will say, I am I I I'm not where David is. <laughs> 
but I also question everybody else's sanity on this film. I'll be honest. Like the more, and I, I will say, I think when I first left the movie, I was somewhat happy with the more and more I've sat with this, the more and more I'm, I'm definitely not quite to David's level of unhappiness with this film, but I'm not happy with this film either. Quite honestly, I have a ridiculous amount of issues with a lot of things in this film. So for me to sit and go, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like that. And like the list just keeps going. It just makes me sad because I'm like this. I really didn't enjoy this film. There are some aspects I enjoyed. And, 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 and I think some of the humor, I think, was pretty good in certain areas. And then others, it was just not. Um, I have to say, yeah, the one golden shining light in this is Tom Holland. I mean, that kid, that guy, this actor, he is the embodiment of Spider-Man. I mean, he's, he's awesome. He's just Spider-Man and watching him on film, it's, it's, it's mesmerizing and he encapsulates it so well. And I think he is the saving grace in this entire film. Um, I agree also. I really like Zendaya. I, I mean, I can't really compare her performance in Homecoming to her performance in this one because she was in this one for, I think her screen time on this was actually up to 40 minutes where her screen time in the other one was a whopping 12 minutes. So I can't compare, <laughs> but right. I will say I liked her a lot in this and I'm glad that MJ got more screen time in this. It makes me very happy. Um, otherwise, yeah, I really, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Basically I was not happy until the third act of this film. And then I finally started going, okay, this is more what I was asking for. This is more what I wanted. This is more what I expect. And it literally took to the third act. And even then the third act, there's still a lot of issues in it, but overall, no, I'm not happy with this film. It's pretty low in the MCU totem pole listings for me it's and i'll be honest i haven't really thought like of that list i couldn't sit here and go well this one's official this is the movie that's the worst one for me i don't know um but it's it's definitely it's down there it's down there it's not high up um i think i don't know there's just there's just a lot that i'm not happy with uh i will have to say really it's they have, I can't give away spoilers, but honestly, the Quentin Beck storyline just doesn't work for me. I'm like the way it was done. I'm not happy with it. Right. <laughs> and, and yeah, it's yeah. But there, there, there are things I enjoyed. There's, there's literally, there's literally one scene in this film that to me, that one scene, I went, okay, oh, this is good. This is good. And I like this a lot. And this makes me happy. But it, it, it took to the third act to get to that scene. And I just don't think a film should take to the third act for me to finally go, yep, here we go. This is what we, this is, this is it. Like, that's just not right. Like, there's just too many misses between the start and then. So, and I really can't talk about a lot of anything, honestly, without spoilers. So I guess where I'm at is I don't hate it. I surely do not love it. I enjoyed aspects of it. I'm not happy with it. I'm not as far down as you are. And I sure as hell am not as happy as what I hear out on the internet. So I'm really curious to see where Bobby and Yasha right. lie with this. Well, uh, I think the bowl picked Yasha next. Yeah, I think so. If I remember correctly. So Yasha, what do wow. you think of Spider-Man Far From Home? I'm just trying to absorb everything <laughs> that you guys just said <laughs> and ripping this movie to shreds. I haven't even like, started to rip. Just, That's the sad part. <laughs> just ri just destroying it. Oh, my God. David, I, I don't remember the last time I heard you talk so badly about a movie before. <laughs> He's so I don't know. Weird. I feel like He's... there's been a lot of movies lately that I've been like, it starts to make me feel like am I just is my soul become darkened? Like I feel like I'm not enjoying as much. But at like, the at the same time, like this summer, I mean, and I know this is a common you know thought for the movies this summer that the movies this summer have been overall oh, like my god disappointing. Super <laughs> you know, disappointing. With, well, a few, with a few exceptions, obviously, right, but. but. I will say you guys are seeing all the blockbusters and not some of the smaller movies. Too, oh, and right? yes, some absolutely. Good stuff going on there. No, there right. are some great things going on in the smaller film on the on the big screen. But let's 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 go back to 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Yasha, Yasha, the depth, Yasha, the depths of David's not liking this film are deep. And I mean, and, well, real quick, yeah, I have to no, respond I to that. It. Like, I want to say, like, <laughs> it's it's mostly, it's like an MCU expectations thing for me, especially considering Homecoming and how much I like Tom Holland as oh, Spider-Man. Oh, you love Homecoming. Because I know it may sound like I absolutely hated this movie. This movie is not a terrible movie, but this movie could have been 500 times better than it is. And that's where it kills me. Like, and yeah, but there are at like sections of this movie, good, decent chunks of it that are, I do not think are, are as good storytelling. Oh, no. But yeah, there's some action in it. I enjoy it. There's a couple scenes that we'll get to in spoilers that I really enjoyed. And, but then the I mean, villain David, is the sound, villain. So I don't know, but you Yasha, sound I want to like hear your thoughts. You sound like describing an Emily Blunt film, like legitimately oh, no, no. talking <laughs> about how much you just do not like something. <laughs> and it's just... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I haven't heard it in a while or whatnot, but it's just kind of taking me back. Um, well, how did, did I think? feel about the movie? I enjoyed it. Like I did take issue with some parts of it and some storyline aspects of the movie that I don't think necessarily needed to be involved. And I mean, we'll definitely get into that a little bit later. Um, but for the most part, I enjoyed it. I thought the villain was very well done. Um, very in line of, if I remember correctly, how the comic was when, you know, this guy who uses illusions, essentially, only changed and twisted a little bit here and there. But for the most part, I thought it was fun. The action was great. I loved Mary Jane. Uh, Zendaya did a great job. I liked to see that she got a little bit more role play in the film. Um, could have done without so much of the John Favreau character. And we'll get into that later. Um I mean, yeah, there were some issues with that I took with some of the storyline per se, and we'll talk about that. And I don't think it's that that big of a deal. It's we more just kind of like, ah, I guess this is what it is, um, and just kind of accepting it and moving on. But uh, overall, I I liked the movie. I thought it was a fun movie. I, I enjoyed it. I think Tom Holland embodies the very character of Spider Man, and I think he's great. I thought the special effects were a lot of fun when he was fighting and kind of uh, the world after the blip, as they called it. Um, you know, it was nice. I mean, like, you know, like you guys, I'm sure I have some of the same gripes that you might have with these films, but I'm going to, we'll talk about those when we get the spoilers and let's just, uh, let's just leave it at the fact that I did enjoy the movie. Cool. Uh, I'm glad that, I'm glad that you liked the movie. No, gotcha. I don't, I'm not wishing anyone to dislike it. I don't but. either. I hope people like it, but yeah. No, I'm glad that he liked it. I'm excited because now we can have a good back and forth about this and in, in spoilers. This is going to be good. Bobby, what did you think of Spider-Man Far From Home? Yeah, as anyone who's been listening to the podcast for long enough, they know I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. He is my favorite comic book superhero. And for me, Tom Holland has been the best embodiment of Peter Parker and Spider-Man. And so, obviously... With that in mind, I've loved him since his first appearance in Civil War and, and was anticipating Homecoming like no other, and it lived up to exactly what I was hoping it would be. So going into this one, especially after the events of Endgame, you're really looking to see how things have happened and progressed since that movie. And I think with this movie, I felt like it was really good, and I thought I enjoyed it more than um, some of the elements that I thought I would. But overall, I didn't quite love it. It didn't get to the level of loving it like I did Homecoming. Because to me, uh, and compared to the other people out there on the internet, the, the two aren't as close to some uh, degree as some people are putting it and even putting this one over it. Um, I think there's a lot more things that Homecoming does and gets right better than this movie does. But then there's also some things in this movie that I, I would definitely say um, surpasses Homecoming for me. So overall, I really am happy and, and, and satisfied with what we got in this uh, sequel and looking forward to seeing what we where we go forward. And as you guys said, Tom Holland kills it. Zendaya continues to blossom in that role of MJ, uh, getting to see these characters again just in general it feels like getting together with old friends and seeing them back together again in their camar camaraderie and how they interact with each other is always to me 
the fun part of seeing this these this iteration of Spider-Man movies is seeing those other characters and, and how they get along together. So um, it, it was it hit on pretty much everything I was hoping and expecting it would. So I got a lot of uh, fun out of this, and especially uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio. I actually really liked that a lot and what they did with the character. So I'm pretty pretty happy about it, and um, I think, uh, yeah, it, it will be interesting once we can get to spoilers and really kind of give a little bit more explanation and thoughts to some of the things and where we differ and where we're kind of similar. So I'm looking forward to it, but absolutely, I really did enjoy this movie a lot and didn't quite love it, but still enjoyed it a heck of a lot. All right. Well, if that's it, then I guess we'll talk about spoilers for Spider-Man Far From Home. (laughs) Uh, Spoiler! So, spoiler alert, we're going to talk about spoilers for the movie. If you haven't seen it yet, we suggest you come back and finish later. Go see the movie first. Um, Or don't, if you ask me, it's fine. (laughs) (laughs) No, I definitely wouldn't say that. No, I I know. Even if, because it's important to what comes next. So, I think either way, you should still see it. It is. Because you don't want to. If hopefully what comes next is good, I hope. (laughs) It's right. I'm sorry. Uh, no, uh, go see the movie and then come back and finish if you haven't seen it. But yeah, we're going to yeah. talk about all the spoilers for the movie, the in credit scenes, all that good stuff uh, from here on out. Yeah. The all right. Credit scenes. All right, guys. Go. All of the things. You guys, you guys talk oh, much. Oh, you're not even going to get involved in this. Uh, I don't want to just sit here and rip the movie. Well, it's fine. Do you guys enjoy it? Like, how, how, about, how about I start with the things that I liked and the things I didn't like, and then you can jump in a little just, bit. Because I think well, the things that you didn't like and the things I didn't like are the same. Okay. Like. Okay. So we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll make it positive again here. So, so I think Tom Holland, Shining Star. Amazing. Um, I really enjoyed. And I will say one of the few things I enjoyed about the beginning of the film. Well, there's one running joke throughout the film that I enjoyed. And then there's one scene at the beginning of the film that I enjoyed. And the one scene I enjoyed was when they're back in school and it's like the morning announcements. And they're basically giving you what the down low on basically how they've handled the blip. And right. it gives you that information. And I enjoyed the way they deliver that message. I think that was a smart, intelligent way to get it across to the audience to understand like, okay, so yep, it's been five years. This is how we've handled it as far as those people showing back up. And they kind of explain how society has rolled a little bit with it. And and I thought that was done really well. Really, the, the rest of the first act, not a fan, I think... They completely bum rushed into Europe um, way too fast. And and then we get to the third act. And I will say in the third act, there's there's actually a joke being made about the entire situation of the film. And the joke is hilarious because it's true. And it's it's the joke the teachers have. And they're talking to the one student who's going, what's going on with Peter, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And I think he's a pimp or a gigolo or whatever. And then he's like, don't you guys see it? And then Zendaya to try to deflect, you know, starts this whole thing. And then the teachers start a whole thing. And the one teacher's like, what? What do you mean? Like, we've just magically been falling into these magical random locations and these wonderful things have happened to us. And these horrible things have happened to us. It's all just chance and coincidence. Is that what you're talking about? And it's like... Yeah, and it makes fun of the fact that basically no human would ever just freaking go along with any of the random shit that's occurred, and that's exactly what they're saying, and so that joke works because it's super true, because the way everything rolled out is just so ridiculously far-fetched. Like, it's 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 a huge stretch, even for comic film, I think. It, it, it's it's just, it's such, it's just such but that, a leap. And that's my, my problem is, is like just making a joke about it, which the joke is funny. Just making a joke about it doesn't fix it. No, like, it totally doesn't fix that's, it. That's my problem because it is, it's a silly, stupid idea. Yeah, <laughs> like, it is. You know, to like, oh, we're taking this group of kids to Europe and yeah, the, you, you're watching the trip going, why are they on this trip and what are they doing this it's for? It's a science trip that has like, nothing to do with science. And it's just silly and and then yeah, they make this joke at the end like, and that's, it, it's funny, but it's like, but no, the movie, the whole premise is still stupid. No, <laughs> like, yeah, it doesn't fix anything at all. So, sorry. That's, just no, I'm just saying, like, I think that it. joke works. And it's one of the few humory jokes that I think does work in the whole film. But no, I don't like the 
way the, I love okay let me put it this way I like the way Quentin Beck being Mysterio was done I like the technology idea I like that aspect what I do not like is like the fact that it's like this group of people who have been burned by Tony Stark or feel that they've been effed over by Tony Stark and it's this group of people that have decided well I got screwed by Tony Stark so I'm super okay with creating a huge lie to destroy other people's lives to actually wind up killing people <laughs> to create a person that would save the world and be another hero. I'm sorry. Wait, what? Who would ever do that? Like, are you serious with me right now? Like, no. Maybe one person, maybe just Quentin Beck would lose his whatever get crazy and do this but then to be like oh i'm gonna have this whole reveal in a a, a a fake restaurant that we've now created and i'm gonna shout out to all these people who also got hosed over by tony stark or feel that they got hosed over by tony stark and then these people are all gonna help me be responsible for basically causing situations where millions of dollars of everything gets damaged people can die just so that i can now be a hero are you effing me right now? No, that's not good with me. <laughs> it's not a good way to build a villain. I mean, him getting screwed, yes, but then to wrap in a whole bunch of other people who apparently have no qualms doing any of the things they're doing and they're actually quite proud of themselves. What? Henchmen are just supposed to be stupid and quiet. No, I'm sorry. That's weird. It's weird to me. And then the whole way they even do that reveal, I'll be honest with you, like I love Jake Gyllenhaal and I think he's a fabulous actor. I think his acting in this movie is absolute shit. <laughs> it is hard to watch at times, actually. I'm watching it and I'm just like, I just, she's so pretty. Why can he not act in this film? I don't understand what's happening right now. So it was really hard to, for me, honestly, in those times. But then, yeah, there's scenes with Zendaya, I think, that are really brilliantly well done between her and Tom Holland. And I like the camaraderie that he still has with his best friend, even though his best friend is, you know, going through a lovely, weird teenage hormonal phase with a girl. It's, you know, and I get it. It's fine. But yeah, no, the entire European trip is totally messed up and weird and stupid and honestly makes zero sense to me. And I don't like exactly how much happy is in this film but the one scene in this movie that i absolutely that really finally brought it home for me literally was the scene where happy shows up saves peter parker gets him on the plane and it's the whole conversation that they have and it's the moment that they finally go to go save them and he looks back at peter and he sees peter doing tony things and it just makes my heart happy because it's that whole scene played out super well for me. I will say the other scenes that did play out well for me again, and it's basically what brought us into the third, the third act is when Mysterio does confront Peter and they're having their first fight sequence. Really? I guess it's where he's getting the information from Peter and he's doing the whole Mysterio and they're doing the whole fight sequence and it's everything simulated and Peter is just not understanding what the hell is happening and he's doing the best that he can. The whole way that played down, that was awesome. That was baller. That was Mysterio like to a T, like where he's just warping your reality and he's making you think you're seeing these things that aren't really there. Like that was done well. I think that the CGI in that was done really, really well. And then the final fight sequence, I thought that, again, the CGI, the fighting, that whole thing, super awesome. But it just, there's too much else is wrong with this film to make me, like, happy with this film. That the CGI fight sequences just can't make up for. Right. Unfortunately. Um, All right, I'm done. <laughs> no, 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 okay, please. <laughs> uh, I don't know, Bobby, Yasha, any thoughts? They're like, Michelle's crazy. Why is she on this show? No, you just Stop. unloaded a lot. That's all. Like, I'm just like, okay. Yeah, I mean, um, one of my main gripes of the film, I think, is the fact that Aunt May found out that Peter's so Peter's Spider Man so early, so quickly. Like, I'm just not a fan of that. Uh, part you know of what? the fun I, for me, was 
I'm I agree with you. I my big thing isn't that she found out; is that she's super so on board with it. Because Aunt May never really quite liked it that much when once she did find out. Yeah, she did find out, but it wasn't until years later right. like that she finally found out or disclosed that she found out. I mean, and Bobby jump in any time um, if I'm wrong on any of this, because I mean, Spider Man is you know probably one of my favorites, if not my favorite comic character as well. Um, I just I wasn't a huge fan of that. One of the major plot holes for me wasn't the fact that they were going to Europe so quickly in this this trip, and it was you know everything was so planned. It's that. The blip was five years. You do the math. Even if they were freshmen, they should all be graduated. And the only person that shouldn't be is Peter. So he should essentially have a whole new group of friends or a whole new group of people around him. Even if they were all freshmen, unless they're just remarkably bad students and they just all failed and stuck around, why are they still there? I think they they blipped too, though. Yeah. Did they, oh, did they blip too? Yeah. Because, mm, that's, oh, yeah, see, that's I wasn't theory, aware yeah. of that. I didn't, I didn't catch that either. I didn't catch that. Um, because the one person that they talked about who did blip was that younger Brad. kid who came back and was older. Well, he, didn't, and, he didn't blip. No, he didn't, didn't blip. blip. Oh, he didn't blip? He no. stayed. Oh, that's why, that's he's why he aged five years. Everybody okay, else who so. did blip are exactly the way they were when it happened five years ago. Oh, all right, so maybe I didn't catch that, and that's my bad, you know, my bad interpreting of what the movie is. Um, well, that's just bad storytelling. Not, it's not super clear. That's why. <laughs> I um, wasn't a huge fan of, I'm not a huge fan of the romance between Happy and the aunt, um, Aunt May. I just think that's just kind of, I don't, we don't need that right away. Like, I don't know. I just don't think that that's something that we need. Um, I did like that scene that you're talking about on the plane. I thought that was fantastic. Very, very well done. I thoroughly enjoyed Mysterio. I thought I really liked all of the people kind of just having this gripe that they wanted to try and get taken care of or, you know, do and and I can see this guy like rallying them and all on board with you know doing these evil deeds and getting this stuff and everything like that. I love the throwback for the two mage characters that his origin story and the other guy's origin story that you know you know they didn't dive into everybody else's obviously because there was a few more people there and maybe they added a few more people than they really needed to or should have, um, but. The, I thought that was brilliantly well done. Like it all kind of throws back to, to, um, to Tony Stark because you know, a lot of these times these villains are created because of something that happened with the hero. And I thought that was a really nice touch. I love the acronym for Edith. Uh, Even dead, I'm the hero. I thought that was brilliant. A lot of fun. And then, um, I mean, I, I did. I, I, I enjoyed the movie. I, I mean, there are parts and qualms that I have with towards the end, but I mean, I'm not going to, you know, too, dive too much into those. I just think it is what it is. You know, it's just I, I enjoyed this, those scenes. Uh, Bobby, any thoughts you wanted to share? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'll just kind of start where there's so much that I, that I loved about it, I think, is that just from the beginning, the way they, they handle the blip. And as soon as you get past that first opening scene, that cold open with Maria and uh, Nick Fury and somewhere in Mexico, I believe, uh, and they were going to the in, in, in memoriam and you hear the Whitney Houston music playing and it's this tribute to all the fallen soldiers of uh, Endgame. I thought that was very clever and, and the way that they handled it in the, the school announcements and everything. And um, just getting to see that explanation done in a way that it's like, okay, here's what happened, basically. And we were, even though they were, uh, I think it was Betty, she was explaining how, even though we had, were halfway through our you know semester um, when the blip happened, that they made us repeat our grade all over again from the start. And so there's, they kind of just kind of tell you everything you need to know up front, and then they roll. And 
I will say I I, I am on board. Uh, I do agree with you guys in that um, they get to Europe a little too fast because of the in the in the preview they show a scene where Spider Man is in New York and he looks like he helps the cops wrap up some bad guys and then he's like, hey, I'm going on a trip, and um, and as David mentioned, they did say that they kind of felt like they wanted to get more to the Europe part a little bit quicker. And I don't know why um, that they're doing it this way, but I did read something about the fact that they're going to release that scene and some of the other stuff that happens around it on the the Blu-ray as a like a deleted scene or something to where it's called Peter's special day or something. It's like all wrapped up into an actual little sort of mini story, I think. Yeah. But, my understanding, it's not even, it's not just going to be, okay, here's a deleted scene, but they're actually going to make it almost like a short film. Right. In the vein of like some of the Thor stuff we saw that short okay. and the, his roommate, you know, almost something like that, I guess. But anyway. Yeah. And, and in fact, I think that's probably my biggest gripe with the movie is that, uh, I wanted to see more Spider-Man uh, because you see a decent amount of Peter and him using his powers and you see him in different iterations of the suit. But I wanted to see maybe a, a couple more scenes of him in the beginning doing his Spider-Man thing before getting off to Europe and then uh, having that whole adventure. But the 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 thing that I, I think, which may be the, the biggest point of contention with the Mysterio thing, the reason why I love that so much is because in the comics, Mysterio has always been a villain. And with the, the marketing of the movie, they make you think that he's this good guy. Now, anyone who's read the comics knows that this can't be. But they do this sort of switching thing by playing into the idea of a multiverse, which we're all kind of now familiar with thinking, okay, that makes sense why he could be a good guy because he's coming from a different dimension. But to find out that he was making all that up, it, it, it makes sense in the way that, okay, he is this disgruntled uh, employee from Stark because he has an axe to grind. And it fits along in the same theme of Homecoming because uh, the Vulture is also was uh, kind of got pushed out of his job by Stark because they were doing the cleanup and then now he has an axe to grind. So all these people with an axe to grind against Stark, it's like Peter and, and by nature, Spider-Man is inheriting uh, the fallout of what Tony Stark's actions have been. And they could be built into a really cool way of creating a sinister six because all these people have this axe to grind with a now dead Tony Stark as Iron Man that they can't take it out on, but they can take it out on his protege, so to speak. So it's, it's to me, it's, it's very cool in the way they're sort of building that up and Mysterio's um, reveal in the, in the, the bar, I was like, that's when it really kind of kicked into me for Jake Gyllenhaal's acting as the character, because before that I wasn't, I already knew I'm not buying anything he's saying. So, to me, the performance was kind of just sort of uh, one note. But then when he got to essentially reveal who he was, that to me is, is when he seemed to really be uh, eating up the role and really diving into it and, and kind of almost twisting the mustache and really having fun with it. And um, I think that that aspect is what really made me feel like this is Mysterio because he is a master of illusion and he's been pulling these strings the entire movie. I had a chance to see it a second time and you start to realize that he's been planning things and putting things in place from the beginning because as he says in that toast, um, there's people who are involved in this that knew that Peter Parker was inheriting Edith, the Edith glasses and this tech they feel, didn't feel should go to this kid. So they've been manipulating things to put things in place to where they could essentially con uh, Peter out of the, the glasses. And the fact that as we get to the end credits and reveal that uh, the Nick Fury and Maria are actually scrolls from Captain Marvel, Talos, and I think his wife's name is Soren or something like that. Uh, 
you see why Fury and Hill seem so gullible to things because in the movie, as you're watching it, you're like, that doesn't seem like it makes sense that they would do these things or follow along. And it, and it's like, there's times when Mysterio is pulling an illusion and Nick Fury and Maria Hill aren't even there. And so they're not even there when you think that they're there. And even when they are there, it's not even them. So it's like these layers upon layers of this, of this illusion that's going on that he's been able to pull off, which really made me um, really get into the, 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 the idea of the character. And so by the time we get to that end where we get the, the first mid credit scene of Mysterio revealing Spider-Man's secret identity to the world by way of J. Jonah Jameson, played again once again by J.K. Simmons, it's like how <laughs> they really let the genie out of the bottle. How do you put it back, if you can put it back, with the world now knowing Peter Parker is Spider-Man? It just, to me, helps really make it difficult because Peter Parker has this thing that they call the Parker Parker luck, and it usually runs bad. And this just seems completely like that. It's like anytime Spider-Man, Peter Parker gets something good in his life, something the next shoe is just about to drop, and sure enough, it does. And so it's like, well, how does he deal with this going forward? And I, I thought that they did such a good job of playing against that and to me the 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 Mysterio thing works in a way that is the complete polar opposite of why um the the um mandarin thing in iron man 3 didn't work is because they set you up for anyone that knows the comics you know who the mandarin is and you're expecting this thing and when they reveal that he's like not who he is and he's this actor playing as the Mandarin, it was like, you sold me a bill of goods and this isn't even the character. So I, I'm not happy. But with this, it's kind of like that reveal that Mysterio isn't who he says he is, but that is who Mysterio is in the comics. He's a master of illusion. He, he completely conned everybody. And that's how good he is at creating these illusions. And so... I just thought that they did such a good job with it. And um, I think the other the other thing that I, I really enjoyed was that sequence right when he, well, right before the sequence where he's um, fighting at the Tower Bridge, where he is building his suit. And he kind of looks like how Tony was when he would build his Iron Man suit, when Happy was letting him kind of go crazy in the lab and, and build uh, everything and the music is playing. And I was like, see, now this is the Peter Parker slash Spider-Man that I love, the scientist kid who's smart and who's doing his, um, his science thing and he's building this suit. And so once we get to that final sequence where he is in the suit and that was when I really felt like, oh, this is the, all of the things that I love about Spider-Man. He's like using his webs and dodging all these drones and, and using creative ways to destroy the drones. And then that part when he goes up against Mysterio and he's finally got his, well, they call it Peter Tinkle, but it's actually the spider sense is in full effect. And it, there's this effect that they use that illustrates him using his spider sense to essentially uh, destroy all the drones that are in the line of sight between him and Mysterio. That thought was very, very effective, and it, it worked on all the levels for me. And I think that's uh, the reason why, for me, I still really enjoyed the movie and um, all the things that they were doing worked on me in terms of uh, what they were going for. It, it landed. So um, I think, yeah, with everything that happens in that post credit, it just really sets the table to me in a way that's interesting because now I have no clue of what to expect necessarily in a third Spider-Man movie and um, how it affects the rest of the MCU. It's hard to tell just because we've got so many movies that don't seem to follow a specific narrative of how they're all going to fit together in some sort of big saga it's interesting to see where this sort of picks up at. Does this pick up in a Captain Marvel 2 or will we have to wait until the Eternals or is it going to be the next Spider-Man movie? But at some point in time, they're going to pick up 
the threads of at least that second post credit when they reveal that the scrolls are involved in the switch of um, Maria and, and Nick Fury. But yeah, um, I kind of think I said everything I liked and disliked. So I, I think I'm good. I mean, I agree with you, Bobby. Like the the whole fight sequence between him and Mysterio there at the end where he's using his spider sense and I really like the way all that played out. I, I full agree with you, but I think my biggest gripe is one good act out of three does not make a whole good movie. That's fair. I mean, I'm I, that's my favorite act, but I, that's not the one good act to me. I still like the other acts as well. It's just uh, that was the most action-packed and the, the most Spider-Man-ish act. Right. So that's why it's my favorite act. But yeah, I, I did still enjoy some of the other acts. I will say the comedy... Uh, I mean, it was hit and miss to yeah. a certain degree, and I, I could have done completely without JB Smooth. Really, he didn't seem to offer too much. But um, yeah, I you agree. know, I think uh, other than that, it, it was it was off and on in terms of some of the comedy. But I think the parts that still seem to work the best are when you have the the kids interacting with each other. Yeah, yeah JB Smooth was a waste of. Um a waste. I yeah. don't understand why he was really there. Um, I felt like. It was Th- that a- was money that could have t- put towards something else. Like, I don't feel like his character brought anything to the movie at all. No. Really. The other teacher was much funnier and much more interesting, but J.B. Smooth was just a waste. All right. So you're just not even going to... Well, we're about to run out of time, so I don't really know true. if I have time to say anything. <laughs> so, um, I mean, yeah, I, I could say a lot. And uh, well, what about what are your feelings on the mid credit and the end credit at least? Uh, mid credits is okay, yeah. Like, oh wow, like what, how's the next Spider Man gonna play out? Like, right. you know, I thought the mid credit scene was fine. The end credit scene, uh, I don't know, I didn't know what to make of it in a way, and I kind of was indifferent to it, <laughs> like, if that makes sense. So, it made me feel better because I will say I don't really well, like what it was doing, but it made me feel better in regards to the way that Nick Fury was through the entire film. Yeah, and the yes, way that- and I, then I'll say this to that: like, yes, I because I watched the movie and the same thing. I was like, I don't know, Nick Fury way seems off. to be acting odd. He doesn't seem himself, and I was just equating it to bad writing. <laughs> like, I'm like, they did not write Nick Fury the way he would be. Like, and then we get this end credit scene, which in a way seems to explain like what I had seen throughout the movie. Right. My only problem with that, and I, you know, in these, with these MCU end credit scenes that we all know and love, and I, I'm included in that. I, I love how they continue to throw these scenes in the credits and they tease things in the future. But I don't, I don't guess I like the idea that the credit scene is almost, is almost required viewing in a sense. No, I, I know what you were saying as far as like the end credit scenes feeling like they're you have to see them. And uh, at some point, I guess that did change to where they sort of maybe felt like they were must see as opposed to just, oh, kind of nice little thing. But I think to the to, to that point, it's almost to the point that the audience expects that to be. A substantial in some sort of way because the one I remember people complaining about the most in recent memory is when you see in Ant-Man and the Wasp and the ant is playing the drums at the end at the second sort of uh, post-credit right. scene thing right. and I remember people were kind of upset because one they showed that in the trailer actually which is, is dumb but um, also because it didn't have any kind of meaning to anything and now I think, yeah, I think if you were to just start doing uh, post-credit scenes and they were just kind of throwaway things that you could just not have to see and it doesn't really lead any uh, credence to anything, I bet you people would really start to complain because they're so used to it having to mean something and rewarding them, quote unquote, rewarding them for sitting through the credits now. Right. But I feel like I guess there's a middle road of like, oh, making an end credit scene that teases something about the future you know, but at the same time, isn't almost like required to explain something that happened in the movie you just saw, you know, and that's, I guess my problem with this one is that, yeah, it does lean heavy on that. Yeah. Yeah. Nick Fury is not himself. Like, and then we get this in credit scene and it's like, Oh, well, I guess that's why. And I mean, and in a way that's cool, but 
I don't know. There's just something, and it's a nitpicky complaint. But uh, I, I wouldn't say about... it's too nitpicky um, because it's true. Because it, it, I think it was Christian Harloff who said um, from Schmozno, he said that if you were to leave before that first mid credit scene, it's a completely different movie. It's a happy ending. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, it's very true because you you don't see that you're missing out on a whole another aspect of the movie, which changes the whole um, essential aspect and. and, and trajectory of what that film leads to at the end so it, it it in this case it did lean in a way to where that post credit or that mid credit scene probably should have just been part of the full movie and ended with that and then just had the one right. of you know the scrolls at the end but then as for the movie itself uh yeah i don't know like like you've already talked about Bobby, that scene that's in the trailer that's cut out, which is apparently, you know, you know, directly mentioned by the director and filmmakers that, oh, we pulled it because we want to get them to Europe more quickly and we're going to make a short film out of it now. And but that's the kind of thing I felt like that was missing from this movie. Yeah. Right. like mm-hmm. I know it's already been yeah. said, but it was just we got there too fast. And one of the things I like about Spider-Man is him doing that kind of thing and interacting with New Yorkers right. and, and that, mm-hmm. that is a major aspect that's missing from this movie that, that, so that I didn't like. And then the, and it was like, it was only halfway through the movie. Cause I mean, I'm trying to just enjoy the movie. I'm not sitting there thinking, Oh man, what, what was in the trailer? What's going to come up next? And, but it did click at one point halfway through the movie. I'm like, wait a second. There was that scene in the trailer with him and the cops. Right. right. Where the hell was that? <laughs> where that scene go to? Yeah. I had yeah. that epiphany at some point too. It was like, oh yeah. Yeah. Huh. And, but then also I did find myself, well, I think or probably around the time I thought about that, which made me think of more of the trailer. And then it clicked. Oh yeah. We've got that scene with Happy coming up and the plane gets destroyed and I'm like, oh, yep, we haven't gotten there yet, but that's going to happen. Right. <laughs> you know? and right. I always hate that with trailers <laughs> when you start to remember yeah. things that then you anticipate. Right. And I mean, that's just a side. That's not a complaint about this movie, but um, it happens. In, yeah. It happens in every movie. Uh, sure. But yeah, I don't know. There's, there's just a lot of the comedy even between the kids. Like, I will say the whole like, you know, love kind of thing between what's his name? Ned and the and the girl. Betty. Yeah, I just sorry it didn't work for me. I thought it was oh. silly and stupid. It and is silly. That's what I liked about it because it's silly and stupid. Yeah, and it, it in seemed, a way it it's very funny. Teenager-y to me, but it so. was a, it was it. I think it went a little too silly, even for an MCU film. Like it's it's I don't know. It didn't feel like it quite fit, and and then yeah, I don't Mysterio. I yeah I, that whole reveal kind of and you've already said this Michelle did not it didn't work for me I, and I, I get I'm also coming at this not really knowing anything about Mysterio other than I'm going into it at least knowing yes this guy's a villain and in the trailer right. he's not so obviously there's something going on here he's waiting for the ball to drop but yeah. still when the reveal happened in the bar I mean I if I didn't physically roll my eyes I. I definitely mentally did it. I oh, was, no, I definitely did. I, I was just like, really? Is this what we're doing? Like, I, it didn't work for me at all. I hated it. <laughs> and, I hated it, too. And, yeah, wow. I, I got to agree with... It's one thing to have one disgruntled villain that that's believable. You get a random person that's just insane and they're even willing to do harm and kill people. That's what villains are. Right. But that he's managed to like have such a group of people, like almost hundreds of people. And there is a nod at one point. Like, I think the guy who's like kind of the tech guy who's running the drones, he he says something like, well, you really want to do that? And and Mysterio kind of gives a reason why. And then they're just like, okay, well, let's just do it then. But even then they're working for threaten their lives. I was going to say that, yeah. But then like so obvious it's weird because it's like they're with him but then they're almost not with him and then he has to get crazy and threaten their life and then they're like oh yeah no you're right boss what it's so like, it's like wait they either need to be all i don't know it was i was not a fan of the group dynamic well, of villain. can i ask you and david then and and this is just purely just a question because i'm curious as to um how how this one didn't work because essentially the same thing happens in, in homecoming with, when you have the, the vulture and his crew, all those people seem to side with him and work with him to essentially destroy things and kill people as well. Why that one, I guess maybe did work. I, don't know. This I, did. I guess because that group of guys was just a, I don't know, a random group of like, 
they were just like kind of the salvage crew and only and also like up to that point like up to the point that spider-man starts to become involved with the vulture in the film and hear me out and correct me if i'm wrong i could very much be wrong and remembering this incorrectly i think you're about to have the same argument to get uh i feel like all they had been doing was like what like stealing things and stuff right like they're selling it for money like, they're, not they're not trying to kill people. They're not killing people, are they? Like, I mean, I think they know that the things that they're selling would kill people, but they feel like they're not the ones killing people. They're selling these items for money. And it's also, I think, something about the fact that these were a group of people, a group of people that were working for Tony Stark. Like, I feel like maybe, maybe I'm elevating them already automatically on a higher like level of hey, they're at least they at least must be somewhat decent people. Like, <laughs> well, I don't based know. Based on like, today's society, no, I know. Even if but you're in, in the, a good job doesn't mean you're a good person. But necessarily. even not even going into the whole hey, it doesn't make sense that you you now have this whole group of people that are so disgruntled that they're fine with going along with murdering people. But it was literally the scene. But it was just even the scene itself and the way this was done. I don't know. It just it didn't work for me, and yes, I, I immediately thought of the Mandarin and and the way I hated how Iron Man three played out in that sense. But you're right, like it, in a way, it, you know, with the Mandarin, it's like, hey, we thought we were actually getting the Mandarin from the comics, and we didn't. And here, it's just kind of the other way around. So in a way, that works. But all I can say is, for whatever reason, it did not work for me, and I didn't like it. Yeah, I didn't like that unveiling um, either. Yeah. I, I don't know. And then there's other stuff like Edith, like, and again, if I'm missing remembering something, please tell me, but it's like, okay. So Peter Parker tells Edith, okay, I'm switching control over to this guy. And now this guy gets it. And not only is this guy get it now and he gets to run Edith, but he's using Edith to basically kill Spider-Man. I don't think I remember Spider-Man saying, Hey, now this guy gets to use it too. He's like, I'm transferring control over to this dude. So why is it now that then when Peter Parker can just manage to get a hold of the glasses, he can still throw them on and tell Edith to stop? Like, it, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, no, it doesn't. And, I mean, I had the same thought. I had to make a reason for it in my own head, which I shouldn't have to do. But yeah, no, I just yeah. figured it was like, OK, I guess even though he transferred it, it never really leaves the ownership of him in general just because of some sort of fail safe that probably Tony put in but that's me making up my own reasoning for what they didn't explain but yeah I would agree that they didn't right and it uh, would be one thing if that I I would buy more into it if indeed then when you know Mysterio is trying to use Edith to kill him like Edith would almost go well wait a second (laughs) there's a fail there's a fail safe here against Peter Parker's death right yeah you know it's right 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 it's one of those things that it's I guess it's easier for me to be annoyed at because I, there's so much about the rest of the yeah, movie I didn't exactly. like. But yeah, totally. to me, that's a glaring kind of problem with the storytelling. Like, uh. I don't know. It, I didn't. I, you know, I didn't like it. I didn't, I'm trying to remember some other stuff that jumps out at me, but that's that's the first stuff I think of right now. Yeah. I think you did mention that you did like this scene where Mysterio is tricking yeah, Peter the, and it's kind of the reveal the kind to of Peter weird, of what's kind happening. Of mind trip kind you like that one I too. I like that a lot. That was one of my some of my favorite stuff from that it. That was one of your saving graces. But again, even just going back to stuff I don't like, like you mentioned the the joke at the end, we already talked about this, but then like it's just the whole trip in in and of itself, the whole concept of why this movie is taking place in Europe to get these students there, it's a little far-fetched and a little just oh, yeah. t- too far-fetched for me. Mm. So, I, I don't know. I was bummed by this. I, I, of course, will continue to see MCU films. It's just one movie. But, yeah, this is definitely a lower-tier MCU for, film for me. And I was, we, <laughs> Michelle and I, were talking about this afterwards once we finally decided to talk about the movie. And I was trying to think of, like, what are my least favorite? And... I'm not saying this is my least least favorite, but this is way down there. It might like, it might be, and I only say that because I started naming off like some of the ones that I know that haven't been your favorites. Like yeah, not hate, but I know they're kind of on your lower tier. And you were even going, nope, those are still better than this. Nope, that one's still better than this one. And like, and I was like, <laughs> this movie is quickly getting bumped to the bottom. Like I could tell. Like I was like, oh, wow, I've only seen it once. Go you down know, there. I don't know, but. Yeah, maybe upon second viewing, it could be a little better. I mean, like I said, maybe I'll be a little more forgiving of things. But what's funny is I feel like mm. I came out a little bit better initially, but the more and more this movie has sat with me, the more and more I haven't liked this movie. 
You know, wow. what's interesting to me is that I, I don't know where I would put it, honestly, at this point. It's too fresh. But what I do know is I, I enjoyed Mysterio things so much that I would help ele- it would help elevate the movie to a higher level to me because the same thing and 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 a very underappreciated movie to me is uh, Avengers Age of Ultron because the the bad guy in that Von Strucker was able to essentially defeat the Avengers without having to really throw punches in a sense he undermined them basically and that's what I felt like Mysterio did in this movie. He undermined Peter Parker's whole identity and and defeated him in a way that he can't beat him in a physical fight, but he was able to manipulate the situation and do so much damage that he didn't have to be able to beat him physically. So I think mm, that's kind yeah. of one of those things that helps put it, push it up there for me. But that's all I got, really, unless anybody has anything else. Uh, no. See, so we'll wrap it up. Um, as always, we would love to hear back from everyone listening or watching. You can email us at feedback at flickereffect.com. You can reach out to us on Instagram and Twitter at flicker underscore effect. Uh, you can watch these episodes uh, if you're listening to them. But if you would like to watch them, you can go to youtube.com forward slash flicker effect. You can find us on there. Like and subscribe, please. Please. Yay. With that, I'm David Lott. I'm Bobby Jackson. I'm Yasha Wilson. And I'm Michelle Hillard. Thanks for listening. <laughs>